Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some brooding hero romance recommendations for you. This is actually my fourth brooding hero recommendation video so you can go check out the other three i'll link them down below if you haven't watched them yet i love brooding heroes because it's just another word for grumpy like i love a good grumpy hero let's get into these recommendations i have some contemporary fantasy alien historical i have like the whole gambit for you so let's get started. First, I have Eleanor and Grey by Brittany C. Cherry. This is obviously the romance between Eleanor and Grey in high school. They were actually very close friends, despite the fact that they were not in the same quote unquote, like cliques, if you will, like social groups. And if he was like a prevalent like football player and she was like the shy, reserved, like reading girl, if you will. Um, but the two of them really connect over familial issues. She's going through some stuff and then he is going through some stuff with his their families um, and they really connect over that. But right when their romance is starting to bloom in high school, Eleanor and her father end up moving away. This book then jumps to present day when Eleanor ends up getting hired to be Gray's nanny for his two daughters. And Gray is not the same person that he was in high school. He is very grumpy and broody and closed off now. And part of that is because of his wife's recent passing and the reason why he has to hire Eleanor is because he's, he's just getting in the weeds with his family and his daughters. Like he just wants the best life for them and he feels like he's not providing that as a single father. And so he's hoping that Eleanor will help him out with raising his daughters. He's very grumpy and a little rude at the beginning, but um, once Eleanor comes back to his life, that old gray, the caring gray ends up resurfacing. And this book is so beautiful, but man, gray puts you through some things in this book, but I really enjoyed the snanny romance and I hope that y'all will too. Gray is just everything. Next, I of course have Miko from Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. This is book two in the Brutal Birthright series. We have like a Polish mafioso man. This is also a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So like Beast, at the beginning of Beauty and the Beast, you have like a very damaged, grumpy man. He wants revenge for his father's death, his adoptive father's death, and he finds it by kidnapping the daughter to the guy or the sister, no, the sister to the guy who killed his dad, Nessa. He ends up kidnapping her and taking her back to his mansion. Um, so this is like a captor captive romance with kidnapping involved. Um, but once Nessa enters his life, he just becomes this grumpy on the outside, but soft on the inside for this woman. She is a beautiful dancer and just like is so positive despite the situation she's been dealt. So I adore this one so much. And Miko is very grumpy, okay? But this woman definitely shows him how lovely being kind and thinking positively can be. Axel from With You Forever by Chloe Lee is definitely grumpy broody, okay? But I love him. He is a fan favorite amongst Bergman Brother readers because he is grumpy, but he is also a total softie. This is the romance between Axel and Rooney. So Rooney in here, she is the best friend to Willa from book one in this series. And she's going through some health stuff right now. She has, I believe, ulcerative colitis. And it's just really affecting her life right now. Like she's in the middle of like a flare time in her life. And Willa proposes that she stays at the Bergman like cabin in the I don't remember where it is but it's a cabin in the middle of somewhere um and so she goes to the cabin just to like realize it's kind of like falling apart Axel owns another cabin nearby to the family one and he's actually been secretly remodeling it so his like family doesn't find out because he doesn't want them to be stressed out so he offers Rooney to come like stay with him in his cabin and for some reason the two of them also have to get into marriage of convenience so Axel can get a certain inheritance from his uncle to help him redesign and redo with the cabin as well um and so Rooney's like oh why the heck not let's just do it but she also has feelings for Axel this one is super cute and funny like all other Chloe Lee's books but Axel is a grumpy grumpy grump and Rooney definitely gets under that hard exterior for a fantasy romance I definitely have to go with The Winter King by C.L. Wilson one of the grumpiest broodiest fantasy romance heroes ever this is the forced marriage between Camzin and King Winter. So there's different uh, like kingdoms in this fantasy world, I think based off of season. So the King of Summerlee is the King of 
the Summerland. He is like, I think in a debt to Winter because he's the king of the Winterland. Anyway, Winter comes up to him one day and is like, I'll forgive you and won't attack you in your land if you give me one of your beautiful famous daughters to marry. And the king Summerland is like stumped. He's like, I don't want to send my beautiful daughters away to a man I don't trust, a man I don't like. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trick him and he's going to marry the daughter I don't like. Um, so that's Kamsin. And I believe he doesn't like her because um, his wife died giving birth to her, which she obviously had no power over whatsoever, but he's just petty like that. Um, so he ends up forcing Kamsin to marry Winter. She has like a veil over her face the entire time they're getting married and even when they're consummating the marriage. And so it's not until they've left the kingdom that Winter realizes he was tricked and he is not happy. He hates that someone fooled him and tricked him and he thinks that Kamsin was in on it, when in reality she wasn't. She was forced into this situation. The two of them have a great banter relationship. Both of them are fiery and hot-headed and it plays off of each other and I adore them so much. They are a perfect couple. They also have powers. So he has like storm, ice powers, kind of like Elsa. <laughs> and then Kamsin has like storm magic. She can like create storms and stuff like that. This one was super entertaining because both of them are quite hot-headed and he is a super grumpy grump. Another fantasy romance is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. Yvonne and Maddox are one of my favorite fantasy romance couples ever. They are so beautiful. Like I think their romance is beautiful. It doesn't start out as beautiful. So Maddox and here, his parents were recently murdered. And there's like a rumor going around that Yvonne, who's like a princess to a neighboring land, was the cause of their death. So he's going out to hunt her down and seek justice basically. Yuven ends up finding him first instead and tells him, whoa, 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 that is a lie. I was not responsible for your parents' deaths. My father was, and I know the perfect way to get back at him. We need to get married and then take his throne. And Maddox at first doesn't believe her. Like he still thinks that she had a part to play in their deaths. Um, but he also agrees that them getting married can be the perfect way to overthrow this guy's kingdom. And so he agrees. So there is this strain between the two of them because he still doesn't 100% believe her at the beginning of their marriage. But Yvonne like tries anything and everything to like convince him that she is all in with him and all in on taking down her father. Um, and she had nothing to do with his parents' deaths. Maddox is super grumpy and closed off to Yvonne because of his parents' deaths specifically. And he just doesn't trust her yet. He doesn't trust her even though she's trying anything and everything to convince him otherwise. He's just so closed off, like he can't help himself. And then once he realizes he don't messed up, <laughs> he then like tries to grovel really badly. So um, I love that part in here because I love good grovel. So um, Maddox in here is a super grump, but he becomes a total softie for Yuven once he ends up falling in love with her. Another Beauty and the Beast retelling is Heart of the Fae by Emma Ham. This is the romance between Sorsha and like this unseely prince here. Um, so Sorsha, her dad is dying. She is a midwife amongst these humans in the human land and she goes to like the last resort she can think of to save her dying father. She goes to this witch in the river and the witch in the river is like, I'll help you and give you the antidote if you bring me back this cast out unseelie fey king. And so she goes to track him down and do that. She's not very welcome when she first shows up at his kingdom because he is very grumpy, like beast and beating the beast. Like he is brooding and hates the world and hates what he's been dealt. He's been cast out from his fey people. He lives on this island of misfits of sorts filled with other people who have been outcasted. So he's not happy with his life and he doesn't really care about Sorsha. He does not want to help her. So Sorsha stays in the castle to try and convince him to help save her father's life and to come back with her. So um, I think this is such a unique and beautiful and beautifully written <laughs> uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling that has a wonderful fantasy romance world. And I feel like any Beauty and the Beast retelling, you're gonna get a broody beast character. So probably the grumpiest alien romance hero I can think of comes from When She Belongs by Ruby Dixon. This possibly might be my favorite Ruby Dixon book. It's a little bit of a chunker, but it is so worth it. Our hero in here is literally named Jurok the Jerk. That's what Sophie the heroine calls him, a major jerk because he, is so mean at first. <laughs> Sophie gets put on this abandoned asteroid with Jurok for certain reasons you figure out in other books in the series, but um, she's basically on the spaceship with a bunch of space pirates and they're like, we need to go find this treasure. We don't want you to be injured. So we're gonna put you with our friend named Jurok 
and you can stay with him. We'll pick you up when we're done with our treasure hunt, basically. So she very reluctantly has to go stay with Jurak. He wants nothing to do with her. He just wants to live alone on his abandoned asteroid by himself. Um, and he also is very hesitant to even like talk or get to know Sophie because he doesn't want to be let down by people. He is a war veteran and he now has like cyber cybernetic limbs a part of him like he's part cyborg and he just doesn't want to be ridiculed and judged because of what he looks like now and Sophie just falls in love with this grumpy grumpy man and he is a jerk at first for sure but he like falls head over heels in love with and becomes a total puddle for this woman like he becomes the ultimate simp for this woman and I loved it. For historical romances, the first one that I have is It Happened One Autumn by Lisa Kleypas. This is the second book in the Wallflower series. Marcus is our hero in here and he is this well-off rich lord and it's his very reluctant romance with an American named Lillian. They absolutely hate each other. They're very headstrong individuals and they think the other person hates them and they hate each other. Like they do not get along. Every chance they have to bicker, they will do so. But I believe the two of them get in a compromising position and Marcus has to marry Lillian. One of the reasons why Lillian cannot stand Marcus is because of how grumpy and broody he is. And she just can't stand this man who can't seem to have any fun in his life. And then Marcus thinks Lillian is this carefree, doesn't take herself too seriously woman. And he can't stand that. But then when they get married, they get to know each other and figure out like those are their favorite parts about the other person. <laughs> Say Yes to the Marquess by Tessa Dare is another fabulous historical romance with a brooding hero. Leo in here has been engaged to Rafe, has been engaged to his brother for years. His name is Piers and he hasn't shown up to marry her in quite some time and she's just sick of it. Like he's out on some mission or something like that and she is like, if he actually wanted to marry me, he would have done it already. So she goes to Rafe, his brother, and is like, I'm calling off the engagement. Like I want to be a wife already and it seems like it's never gonna happen. So Rafe really wants his brother to marry Cleo for certain reasons in the book um, and just thinks that his brother will have a better life if they're married. And so he's like, no, no, you know what? I'm going to make this marriage happen. It's gonna work. Like we're gonna put on the best wedding ever and I'm gonna help you do it. Even though he is not that type of man at all. Like he does like underground fights for a living. Like that's how he makes his money. Um, and he is very gruff, just hates the world but he loves Cleo. Like he doesn't admit it at first because he's like, that's my brother's fiance. But like he figures out very soon, like I can't stay away from this woman. Like she is everything. And what's gonna happen when she marries my brother? Like that's gonna be horrible. Like I'll be around this woman all the time and I can't have her cause she's gonna be married to my brother. So there's a lot of forbidden stuff happening in here, but this was very entertaining. And lastly, one of the most brooding heroes ever in a historical romance would be present day McKenna from Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas. This is the romance between McKenna and Lady Aileen. So this book has like two different timelines. The first part is when Aileen and McKenna are first starting their romance when they're younger. I think I want to say teen era, teen age, but he is actually one of the stable boys in on her estate. But then Aileen's father ends up catching wind that her and McKenna have been spending some time together and have fallen in love with each other and he is not about to have that. He threatens McKenna's life and claims that he will ruin him if she doesn't call things off. So she tries anything and everything to make McKenna hate her so that he'll leave even though she is desperately in love with him. He is heartbroken and then travels to America to make a name for himself and to get wealthy. It's years later, he's done just that. He is now a rich, wealthy man. and He's come back to England to seek retribution for what Aileen did to him and for Aileen breaking his heart. So in present day, he's very broody, very gruff, and just wants the world to hate Aileen as much as he does. He actually doesn't, he's in love with her. <laughs> um, but he's very hurt by what this woman did to him and he wants revenge. It's very interesting too, because you get to see the contrast of past McKenna when he's so sweet and caring as a little stable boy and present day when he just, hates the world now. But this book is everything. There's a reason why everyone loves this historical romance. And I hope that y'all do as well if you haven't read this one yet. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romance recommendations with the brooding hero. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me. What emoji are we gonna do? Let's do a horse emoji because he was a stable boy. McKenna was a stable boy. So leave me a horse emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.